everybody, Jake and Gino here. And just, you know, recently getting some requests coming in on the whole apartment house thing. Is a house a better investment or is, is an apartment a better investment? Is a house an investment? Blah, 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 blah. I, I think, Gino, I'm not going to get caught up in, in the posture game that we see some of the folks like Kiyosaki and Grant Cardone out there saying that a house is not an investment or I'm not going to begin to act like Webster's Dictionary here or the word definition emperors and, and say that a a house is not an investment. That's not here. Uh, that's not what I'm here to comment on. Um, I just want to discuss how we treat this topic and and what we're personally doing. I'm not going to get caught up in, in that stuff. But personally, I, I purchase certain things which I believe to be significant, but not in equal amounts. And uh, and we'll get to why in just a minute. But I want to first start with what, what do I buy and and what do I buy that I believe to be significant or a quote unquote investment. And you know, obviously, we buy apartment buildings. That's that's what we do. We, we buy apartment buildings and we just stay in that lane and we, we try to do it over and over and over again. But there's some other things in the mix. We buy raw land, got, got some raw land personally. We got some raw land in businesses. Uh, I personally buy gold and silver. I also buy a fair amount of bullets and brass and ammunition and things like that. Um, and, and I own a house. That's really it. Keep it very simple. Have cash um, whole life, right? So why do I do this? Personally, I like the control. I like that these are, are physical assets for the most part and that, you know, I'm, I'm in the driver's seat and I like to buy things that I believe I can sell for more in the future that are going to hold value. So that's where the whole is it is an investment thing, is it not? But the bulk of my available cash is looking for a dividend payment. It's out there saying, hey, I want to grow. I want to create little additional soldiers, aka cash flow. That's the reason, the number one reason why 98% of my investment capital gets pushed back in to apartments. Simple as that. And we're going to get into why you know we love apartments even more. But uh, you know that's that's where I'm coming from. Not trying to say a house is not an investment. You know my house is up about a million dollars from the time that I bought it. Okay, according to Zillow. I, maybe it is. Maybe it is. I'm not going to again get into that crap either. Um, but look, it's it's something that I live in. My family really enjoys. Um, I ex expect it to be worth more in the future than at the time I bought it. You can say, well, Jake, you know, you, you put in this huge wall and, and you're, you're doing this, that, and the other thing to upgrade it. Yeah. You live once, try to enjoy my existence here and try to take care of the things that I own. So that's where I'm at. That's where we're operating. And, uh, Gina, what say you? First thing I like to invest in is myself. We don't ever talk about that. You're being with, cute on me right now. <laughs> <with education. laughs> Dude, it takes a lot for me to be cute. All I'm saying, uh, it, we're, we need to invest in ourselves. That's the very first thing. I think everyone needs to think of that. And when we look at certain things as entrepreneurs, we look at things as expenses. We need to invest in our education. And now Jake and I have done that over the last dozen years, me from real estate mentors to real estate coaches, to life coaching, to Dude, the hundreds training. of books that we've read every day though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so let's think of that as in a word. You have to invest in yourself first. That's the first thing. The next thing is I would say everything that Jake is mentioning is an asset. We want to invest in assets and we don't want to invest in depreciating assets like cars. A oh, car that's a, such a huge point. That's such a huge point. Yes. A, a Get into that more. A, yeah. A car is a depreciating asset. Well, nowadays it doesn't seem like it because <laughs> my, my daughter, I bought my daughter a Kia four years ago for $31,000. Four years later, with 35,000 miles on it, they want to give her 25,000 bucks at the dealership. I could probably get more. So I don't know if that, that may be a fallacy nowadays, but you know, yeah, these car prices are going, to come down, are going to come down. But we don't want to invest in cars unless it's our business. So unless you want to go into Toronto house car hack, that's a business model. That's something different. I'm just talking in general. I personally like whole life insurance. It's an asset. It's I'm putting money there. It's a cash management tool. It's guaranteed returns over the life. It's long-term planning. Jake was talking about his home. A home, I look at it from two perspectives. It's an asset and then it's a luxury. If you can afford yes. it, let, let's go into it. Let's buy the home. I'm doing the same thing right now. I bought my home for X amount to, uh, what, four years ago. It's up 80%. In four years, I didn't expect that. I've invested into the house because I've done the pool. I've done the decks. I put over a couple hundred grand in the house easily. But that's like Jake said, that to me, I know is a luxury. I can afford yes. that. I'm not looking at that as, oh, wow, I hope this house goes up. This house appreciates. That's there's not no my business. There's yes. no yield on it. We want leverage. We want liquidity. And we want control. That's what we're looking for in every investment to make it a, a profitable, really good investment. Not many vehicles have that. A single family home 
it has leverage, right? You can leverage it. It has control. You can control it. There's not much liquidity there. And in that fourth one, I would say what Jake is going to touch on is yield. With a single family home, there's not much it's yield. There's wheel, a lot of right? risk. That's baby <laughs> steps. That's Fisher Price, my first investment, right? There, there's yes. a lot. There's a lot of risk there. When Jake talks about, you know, all those other assets, those assets are there. Gold is there. It's a physical asset. It's something that, you know, you're there. You can always trade it and trade it in for liquid cash, for cash, for something that you can use to barter. Now you look at what we're doing in the apartment space. When we look at an asset, we want a couple of things. We do want cash flow. It's like buying a stock. If you're buying a stock on speculation, it's still an asset, right? You're buying it for $10. You hope it goes up to $15. Those who are a little more savvy look for dividend yielding stocks or they buy puts and calls. But when that dividend on that stock is what is called a yield. And for us, Every month, that's what we call cash flow that pays us every single month. So to us, that's an investment. We're looking at it, but it's an asset as well. So take a look at understand the difference, I think, between it and what are you trying to accomplish? You may be younger right now and saying to yourself, hey, I'm not worried so much about the yield. I don't want a 4% dividend yield. I get it. I need to create wealth. How do I create a massive amount of wealth? While well, you're looking at speculating, it's, it, there's a little bit of a difference. I'm going to buy crypto. Well, crypto doesn't really give you a yield unless you're mining it and doing dual asset, but let's not get into that. You're buying a crypto, let's say Anchor, ANKR. It's at 16 cents right now. I'm hoping it goes up to 20. It, it is an investment and, and it is an asset, but it's really a lot more speculative because you're hoping something goes on. When Jake and I buy a 25 unit apartment complex, we're buying it for a certain number. We know in within the next three, six months, we're repositioning it. It's going to pay us every month on that cash. Cash flow. So, and what we love about it is it, it is an asset that is in demand going forward. People need it. It is a basic human need. And we know that affordable housing is going to be in, in big demand the next five to 10 years. There's not enough being built. So when we're looking at it that way, understand is an asset that's something that you know you own. It's 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 something that's what we like to say it's physical. It's something, you know, the Robert K. Sucks says puts money in your pocket. No, to me, an asset is all the things that Jake had described. But then let's Take that step further, Jake, with the investment model. Yeah, and I think it's just the, the quality of the asset, or mm -hmm. um, you know how much it's going to be valued to you, right? And so that's why it's it's a percentage of my income goes to the bulk of it goes to you know apartments, mm -hmm. right? But then I have these maybe auxiliary assets that you know maybe more luxury based or a little more speculative based, mm -hmm. um, but I still want to own some of them. It, it, but it's just, it's a much smaller percentage than the things that I'm putting the bulk of my income in that or are going to produce cash flow from me every month, which, which is my main business. I think that's the, the key defining, uh, you know, component to this. I is love that, what you just said. Yes. Yeah. Let me cut you off for a second. I'm really sorry. Yeah. You're putting money into income producing assets. And it's the same thing with us. We are, everyone walking this planet can think of yourself, light bulb moment. You are an income producing asset. The more you invest in yourself with education and with proximity and with going to events and doing all this stuff, the more knowledge you have, the more money you're going to make. So don't shy away from investing in yourself because you are, once you understand that you're the income producing asset and you can really take control of that, Jake is buying apartment buildings because they, they produce income. He's buying his home. It's a luxury. He's buying bullets. They're luxuries. He's going to use them. He's going to enjoy them, but they still are assets because he can trade and them. They're and gonna, sell and them. I expect in the future to be worth more, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. But you need to be the income producing machine. It all starts inside with, with the fire in your belly. Just like Gino's the content machine, you need to be the income producing machine for yourself. So again, the reason we love apartments, very simple. That dividend payment, aka the cash flow every month, that's why they're number one on our list. No, second reason, the tax benefits. You can't ignore that. It's not about what you make. It's about what you keep. Yes. And number three, OPM, baby. Other people's money, we get that principal pay down. The, the residents are kind enough every month to not only you know make the, the principal payment, but also put the cash flow in our pocket to help grow the wealth. So repeat that for me again. So I want, I want everyone to write that down and put it on their vision board or wherever they're looking at every day, because it's really important. This really, you really need to become part of your DNA when Jake is saying this to you, because you need to think of multifamily as that vehicle. Number one, the reason that 98% of my available cash goes into apartments, cash flow, the dividend payment, the monthly, you know, draw payments that the apartments, uh, the multifamily communities create. Number two, the tax benefits, Number three, the OPM, the principal pay down. Love that. Gino, Jake, and Gino.com, hit me up. We'll buy our profits. This is where it all started. 
buy right, manage right, finance right. Become the income producing machine that you're meant to be. Woo! I like that, G Papa. Well done, sir. Mr. All right, everybody, have a great day. Thanks, bro. Take care, Take care everybody.